Hi everybody, here's another Muddiest Points mini lecture for September 17th, 2013. Now, I got a lot of questions about jump tables and how they work and what they're used for and, and things like that. So I'm going to go over some real basics here. Jump tables are arrays that store program addresses, right? And program addresses are the labels that we could jump to using the jump instruct, J instruction. They've just been replaced with an index. I'll get more into that uh, later. Jump tables support the switch case programming structure. It's, a, it's the principal version. We can also use them in finite state machines, but we won't get into that in this class. Just know that they are used for the switch case programming structure. When using jump tables, you want to do things in this sequence. So first, I like to write the cases. Remember, we're supporting a switch case uh, structure. So I write the, we write the cases first. Then I want to initialize the jump table. The cases, when I write the cases, that'll tell me where my labels are and what they are. And then I can use that to initialize the jump table. Then I want to write the access and jump block, which is basically going to be the same every time. It's just what the specifics are, right? So first off, we write the cases. In our case, we had three cases. One was h equals i plus j, uh, or the zero case was h equals i plus j. The one case was h equals i plus h and the two case was h equals i minus j. And you can see we've got our little math for that in each one. Now in each of these cases, we also had a break statement at the end. And the break statement uh, is replaced with a jump exit. And exit is the post switch statement. So it's whatever comes after the switch statement. In this case, it was h equals h plus one, which is what this math uh, section does down here. We also had a default case uh, that I didn't handle in class uh, but it is in the uh, jump table example on the uh, on Blackboard, right? So now that I've got my my four my three cases and a default, I give each of the cases a label. So there's an L0 label, an L1 label, and an L2 label. Now remember that all of these things are situated in memory. So let's go back. Let's look at uh, what happens when we we uh, compile this uh, section. So uh, here's Mars, right? And we've got the same set of cases down here, L0, L1, and L2. Right, I'm going to go ahead and compile this, and we're going to look at the code. Now, the part that executes that is right here. Right, So here's the, the uh, my three cases, L0, L1, and L2. And you'll notice that they're located in memory. They have an address, a number. So here's 4004C. Uh, uh, or 40,004 C, 40,050, 40,054, 40,058. And you'll notice that, that each instruction is stored at a specific location, and again, they're offset by four. This is the same as our arrays, right? Because every location in memory stores one word, which is four bytes, and memory is, is addressed by byte, right? So here, we start our labels at 4C, it goes up by 4 for every uh, instruction, every single word, right? Now, when, what the uh, assembler does is whenever it's building our code, it finds and, see, and it encounters one of these labels, it finds that label, and then every time we reference it somewhere else, if we're referencing it at default, for example, the default uh, label is down here uh, at uh, well, it would be down here at the sub uh, instruction right there. Uh, so the default label is there at 64. And you can see when we use it up here, we actually load um, uh, the register uh, BNE10. So we're skipping 10 down. We don't actually use a label here. It just skips uh, 10 down here. It's 13 because it's it's 13 up, right? So it's a, it's a relative transfer. And you can actually see uh, the calculation of where it jumps to. Uh, based off of, of that, right? Uh, if we look at the memory section, you can see the addresses, uh, and we'll switch to hex here. So we're doing edit, settings, um, values displayed in hexadecimal, right? So the, 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 um, uh, when we declared the jump table in the editing piece here, uh, up top, we said L0, L1, and L2. Now, what the assembler did is it found out where those are situated in memory and it made the first three bytes of memory starting at address um, zero or one zero zero one zero 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 zero. So these are my L0, L1, and L2 
addresses, and they correspond directly to the locations here on uh, in memory, right? So the jump table stores the locations that we're going to be jumping to, right, in the future. Going back to the code, the next thing we want to do is initialize the jump table, and I did exactly that. And what this does is basically the uh, the what uh, I'm saying here is I'm uh, telling the assembler. Uh, the dot data keyword says this is a section where I'm going to be declaring all of my variables. This is all the memory I want to reserve in RAM, right? So the jump table in every array that we ever store, whenever, however we store it, um, goes into RAM, right? And that's what the data section is. This is data memory. Uh, so the jump table, I just give it a label. So this could be anything. It could be any English word, colon, Dot word and this is saying I want uh, whatever I'm whatever this variable is called I want it to be an array of words and I want to initialize it with three words corresponding to L0 L1 and L2 so when it when the assembler compiles this it goes and finds out what the addresses for L0 L1 and L2 are and replaces those in the three locations of memory the jump table reserves right and then finally, I want to do an access and jump. And remember that a jump table is an array, right? And we did array access. Each entry uh, in an array is a word. It's four bytes, right? Uh, in this case, we want to do a variable index array access, right? So that uh, given our k, which is our switch case variable, we have to load the base, which is the starting address of jump table, and we have to calculate our uh, word address by hand because the load word when we load data at a word address we can't use an offset because it's a variable index uh, we can't use a fixed offset we uh, have to use a constant offset of zero and calculate the uh, word address by hand and remember this is exactly what uh, we do when we're uh, using a fixed offset except we're calculating the um, four times k online. We have to do it in the program, right? And what that looks like is this. We load the address LA for jump table. Uh, so that loads the address into T4. So jump table, whatever locate, whatever the start of jump table is, gets loaded into T4. Then uh, I multiply k by four. So k here, I'm just using the same register, uh, a different register, actually. Uh, so S3 is where k is. I shift it left by 2, which is the same as a multiply by 4. Uh, so that, uh, the 2 is a uh, saying I want to multiply by the power uh, 2 to the power of whatever I give it here, and this is the power of 2. So shift left multiplies k by 4, and I'm storing that value in T1. And then this next part calculates the actual word address. So the jump table is, uh, so the actual word address is the base address, which is the jump table start address, plus four times k, which gives me a location somewhere inside of the jump table, right? So now this is the address to a location in the jump table, and that stores the location of the triggered k. So we have to load that location, we're just loading it right back in. So we take t0, which is the location of our, the case that we want to trigger, and uh, storing that now case address in T0 and then we use the jump register command to jump to that location. And what that does is it runs through here, uh, we calculate our address, we load the location of where we want to go, which of these three entries we want to go to, and then this goes to that entry. So this is actually allowing us to switch between 0, 1, and 2 just based off of the value of k. And k is set by uh, some magical other process, either by the user or by another program or by calculation or something like that, right? And you can see the full example of this uh, in uh, for Mars in the jump table example.asm, which is posted on Blackboard, and you can see it execute uh, just like that, right? So go ahead and play with that. Now I also wanted to clear up uh, using J versus JR and JL. Uh, J is the unconditional jump, and it always goes to a specified labels, right? So we can't change this label during execution. We can only cha change it during uh, at uh, compile time, right? Or uh, during um, yeah, we can't change it during runtime. We can only change it at compile time, which is uh, what label is, right? And we use this in if 
and uh, loops, if else statements, and breaks. That's pretty exclusively, pretty much exclusively where we use J. Now, JR is an unconditional jump to register, and we can actually give it a variable, and we can change what is stored in here, which allows us to implement switch case statements and return statements, which is pretty fancy, right? So what JR does is it jumps to a program address specified by whatever is inside of T0, which is really neat, and it's very flexible. Again, we use it for switch case statements and return statements. We also have JAL, which is an unconditional jump in link, and it's basically the same thing as an unconditional jump, with again, with a fixed specified label, it has to be fixed, um, but it has the extra step of it sets the return address to the address of the next, uh, uh, next instruction in the program, which allows us to pair it with JRRA to define a procedure. Now, Moving smoothly into writing functions, remember a function is just a labeled block of code, right? It's like a procedure, except that it it's like a it's like any part of a function or any part of a program, except that it ends with a jump uh, jump to register RA statement. And basically, what we've said is I'm going to label this block of code. In this case, it's print badger. I do a little print syscall inside of here or it could be anything and we could name it whatever we want and then I do a JRRA at the end and what the JRRA does is it looks at whatever the value in the return address is and it jumps back there right now we use this in pair with the JAL uh, statement which allows us to call a procedure so here's uh, I hear of uh, here's a bit of calling a function so here I'm setting up a loop uh, I've got a little loop. I'm saying while it's not equal to while my counter is not equal to zero, um, call this function. So what happens is we execute the function. The JAL instruction sets the return address register equal to the next instruction in line. Then it runs this. It jumps to this function, jumps to this procedure, executes each of these instructions in return, and then we, when it gets to JR. It reads this register back, which holds the location of this loca of this instruction. Execution jumps right back here and resumes uh, resumes executing. So what will happen is we'll do the test. If the test isn't met, then we execute uh, the JAL instruction. Return address gets set. We start executing these. We read return address and jump back to it, which is this value right here. We do the decrement for the loop, jump to the top of the loop right here, and do it all over again. So this is actually a little compressed version of the, the print badger uh, loop, right? These were all great questions. Uh, I had a really good time in class today, and I hope you guys did too. Uh, and I'll see you on Thursday.